was the summer of 92. My nine-year-old brain and body had initiated the period of my life I like to refer to as the years my raging hormones took over any inkling of rational thought. <laughs> a time when a young potential suitor would glance at me from across a crowded lunchroom whilst eating his or her packed PB&J lunch, and I would belong to them for all eternity. A single-parent household would mean that my summers were spent at a YMCA daycare center in Columbus, Ohio. Here I would play freeze tag, paint with my fingers, and pretend that any of the friendships I was making would last longer than the week. One particular lunch period, I became engaged in a singing competition with a little bitch named Lindsay Lucio. <laughs> The Lion King soundtrack was playing on repeat on a counselor's boombox, and we were particularly obsessed with the song, The Circle of Life. We were attempting to pitch perfectly recreate the African introduction, and were recruiting our friends to vote on who was the better singer, thus who would begin their destiny as the next Bette Midler. Lindsay proving to be the massive super cunt I knew her to be, <laughs> sabotaged my chances of winning by bribing our cohort with extra cookies her mom had packed her, probably just for this situation. <sighs> my lunch was lacking anything bribe-worthy, so it was a landslide defeat. Casey Cooper, the daycare heartthrob, moseyed over to our little competition and had remained silent until the very end of the voting slash bribing period. It wasn't until I received an epic defeat that he chimed in. I don't like cookies, so I'll vote for Katie. <sighs> and just like that, he was gone. <sighs> and so was I. <laughs> lost in the pool of the blue or brown or green color of his eyes, <laughs> swimming in his wheat-colored hair. I think it was wheat or auburn or jet black, whatever it was. It made my nine-year-old heart palpitate. He was my dream man. He was the one. He didn't like cookies, so he voted for me. <laughs> Every week, the YMCA would pile all of its summer daycare kiddos in a big yellow bus and take us to various entertaining establishments throughout the area. We would visit skating rinks, mini golf courses, and amusement par parks. 100 plus children ran amok in the public with five to seven employed teenagers who attempted to safely herd us away from child molesters and oncoming traffic. <laughs> it was a great time to be a child. <laughs> One Friday morning, we were on our way to the Wyandotte Lake Amusement Park. I was particularly excited about this trip because I had a plan. One of the rides at Wyandotte had been coined by the other kids as the makeout ride. I wasn't entirely sure what making out entailed, but I knew that I would strategically plant myself next to Casey Cooper throughout the entire day to ensure my rightful spot next to him on every ride possible including the illustrious makeout ride. Come hell or high water, Casey Cooper would be mine. <laughs> Everything started so well. <laughs> I boarded the bus and found my seat directly behind Casey at the window. I could see his ear between the crack of the seat. <sighs> what an ear. <laughs> it looked soft and almost as though it was wanting for me to whisper things into it. I had no idea what to whisper or if it would hear me, but I thought perhaps that it would be the right time to implement a brainwashing technique I had invented at this moment. I whispered words like hand-holding and kissing and make-out ride with me thinking that this would have some sort of power, mind control over him. And then THE song came on the crackly bus radio. THE song that had perfectly managed to express all of my nine-year-old emotions for Casey Cooper, SWV's Week. I shivered, 
Does Casey feel the electricity between my lips and his ear? Does he know that for the past several days I sang this song while dry humping a pillow pretending it was him? <laughs> so I started to sing along. <laughs> my seat partner inched away from me slowly, <laughs> asking, what are you doing? <laughs> As it became more apparent that I was directly crooning the 90s ballad into a seat crack in front of me. I told her to shut up and kept going. I get so weak in the knees, I can hardly speak. I lose all control and something takes over me. <sighs> Song lyrics had never meant as much to my nine-year-old heart as they did in this moment. If only Casey could hear me. If only my brainwashing attempts would work. If only I understood anything about hormones or boys, maybe I would have stopped acting like a crazed little idiot and could have enjoyed my life just a little bit longer. But then he spoke to me. Once we arrived at our destination, the man of my dreams turned to me and said, were you singing earlier? <laughs> I wanted to scream. Yes, of course I was singing. One must sing when faced with such a soft, supple, adoring ear as yours, my love. <sighs> singing is the least I can do for you, my darling. But instead, no, what are you talking about? And after one confused glance, he was gone. Discouraged, I bounded off the bus to continue with my plan, always be next to him. Oh, and oh, I was. I followed that unsuspecting boy around the park with a gusto that the most experienced stalker would admire until we were at the ride. The makeout ride. And yes, my friends, we were indeed seated next together. Why have you been next to me all day? Casey asked as we boarded the two-person car that provided ample privacy from our mates and counselors. I have no idea what you're talking about. I was not good at the art of seduction. I hadn't even heard of the word seduction. This was infuriating, and now my time was almost up. We sat in silence for a minute. I started to feel all hope slip away, all opportunity to make my move, to unfold my destiny of becoming Mrs. Casey Cooper, when a glimmer of hope sprung up as he uttered, you know they call this the makeout ride? <laughs> Much to my chagrin, I responded, what? Ew, that's gross. <laughs> I don't think it's gross. You don't? No, I think it's cool. Oh. And then it was over. <laughs> we looked at each other, and I knew in that moment that Casey wanted to make out with me, I think. Right? Didn't he? Was he smiling at me? Should I just kiss him now? Should I just jump on him and hump him like my pillow? <laughs> What the fuck am I supposed to do now? <laughs> we left the ride and I wanted to weep. I missed my chance. It was lunchtime and we all sat under a tree in the park. I watched Casey eating his lunch with his friends in silence. So close. So far. <laughs> Unwilling to let it go, I came up with one final fleeting attempt. A letter. I would take out a piece of my Lisa Frank stationery <laughs> with the hearts and unicorns on it, something I had been saving just for the occasion, and I would write the love letter to end all love letters. Dear Casey, I like you. I think you are very good looking. I wanted to make out you on the train ride, but I was scared. <laughs> if you want to be with me and make out with me or whatever, let me know, and you can be my boyfriend. You would be a very nice boyfriend. XOXO, Katie. I included my number and instructed him to call me. As lunch wrapped up, I ninjaed my way over to the boys' abandoned things and slid my note into Casey's Animaniacs lunchbox, <laughs> sealed with a kiss. The rest of the day was a blur. Park, ride, snacks, bus. I was seated further from him this round, but I still managed to get a good glimpse of the crown of his head. 
I stared at it, looking for clues, for any indication that this was a man swept away with a moor. It was hard to tell, but I was, help I was hopeful. When we arrived back at the Y, our parents were waiting for us and there was no time for socializing. A response would have to wait until the note was discovered. That night, I dreamed that Casey and I were riding in a hot air balloon. We kept touching each other's ears, and at one point, we were hugging ferociously. <laughs> I woke up, humping my pillow, confused and disoriented. Casey's name still on my nine-year-old lips. I spent the weekend sorting out my feelings, which for some reason meant lying in a sunbeam next to a window in my room, singing every pa lo power love ballad I knew. At one moment, I was on my second verse of George Michael's father figure. <laughs> and my mom poked her head into the room. Honey, I need to talk to you. What, Mom? God, I'm busy. Well, I just got off the phone with a boy's confused parent. Apparently, you left a note in a lunchbox. Oh, no. My plan. I hadn't factored in the undeniable truth that lunchboxes go to parents to put lunch in. Casey wouldn't even open his lunchbox once it was empty, and now my beautiful note was in the hands of someone's parent? And now my parent knew everything? Everything. I died. I sat in front of my mother and I turned into a ghost. All I could utter was, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, honey, that doesn't explain how they got our phone number. I don't know, Mom. God, leave me alone. <laughs> honey, I just wanted you to know. Apparently, you left the note in the wrong lunchbox. You meant it for someone named Casey? Apparently, it went to a boy named Todd. <laughs> but is... <laughs> but his father wanted me to let you know that you have very nice handwriting <laughs> and very good spelling. I ran out of my room, screaming, and hid in my backyard until it was time for dinner. My mom avoided eye contact with me and allowed me to wallow in my own embarrassment without further commentary. I never again tried to make my move on Casey Cooper. I stuck to singing competitions and freeze tag for the rest of the summer. I wish I could say I learned my lesson. But then Michael D'Amico, <laughs> he came into my fifth grade classroom, asked me where I got the construction paper I was drawing on. <laughs> and let's just say, I was a goner. That was Katie Harris.